story in ADHD using naturopathic medicine and homeopathy is the topic of discussion today with Dr. Sonam. Dr. Sonam is Doctor of Naturopathic Medicine and Master of Science in Integrative Medicine Research with focus on kids' anxiety issues and ADHD. I am Amita from Nourish Talk, a global platform for natural and holistic therapies. I'd like to introduce all of you to Dr. Sonam Bhimbra, who's joining us right now. Welcome, Dr. Sonam. Thank you so much, Amita. Thank you so much for having me back. I'm so excited to be here. Great. So let's, um, yeah, let's get started. Sure, sure. Okay. So last time I was here, we talked about the overlap between ADHD and anxiety, and it's very well established in the literature of how psych disorders are becoming more common in kids and how um, they tend to present together and what they might look like in some naturopathic approaches. Um, I gave a lot of information. Um, so I actually turned all of that into a PDF for y'all if you want to like refer back to some of the things I talked about. And I'll put that in the chat box um, just so you have that information for you. But today I'm gonna keep it very brief and to the point. And I'm just gonna talk about one case. So, um, and if you don't, if you have any issues with the PDF or the download or anything, let me know. It's my first time doing this. Um, okay, so let's get into it. So this is the case of anger, aggression, ADD, and anxiety in a five-year-old boy. Um, this kid was, um, so yeah, this is kind of what we talked about. So this kid was developing a lot of aggressive behavior. He has been, you know, with all the um, unrest in the world, he's not going to school anymore. It, it was, um, <laughs> It was taking a toll on all of us, but definitely on kids. They've had like a disruption to their routine and like a lot of uh, behavior has been coming up um, of like acting out and things like that. So he's a five-year-old and he's addicted to video games. If he's not at school, he's just playing his video games, bullying and antagonizing his younger brother who's three years old. He had difficulty focusing in school. Um, he was always talking or this and that, but he actually really loved school. He, I think it was because he loved his teacher so much. And so not having that anymore also kind of um, created some problems for him. Obsessed with violence. Everything you pick up, it becomes a gun. He's shooting at his brother, he's shooting at his mom. You know how sometimes boys play like that, but everything became about, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna uh, fight you, or it was just too much. And like, you know, his mom would be like, all right, knock it off, and he, he wouldn't stop. He was disrespecting his mother. Um, and just not listening and being very um, defiant and things like that. There was also a negative self-talk picture. He was very down on himself. He was saying things like, oh, I'm, I'm so bad or nobody loves me or you only love my younger brother. You don't love me. Um, you, uh, like nobody's gonna marry me. <laughs> I don't even know where a five-year-old comes up with this stuff. Um, I'm a coward. I don't even know where he was picking up these words. And his mom was like, I don't know where he's picking up these words. I don't know anybody who's talking to him like that or where he's getting this. Um, but he also really had his like athletic talents. He was a talented BMX biker and he loved it. That was, I mean, he's five years old. That's very young to be in that sport, but he's been doing it as soon as, I mean, she says that from a young age, he's just loved the bike and doing tricks and things like that. And again, with the disruption in the world, he wasn't, he, this was an outlet he wasn't having as much anymore either. So I feel like there was just a lot of things at play that just kind of made his um, behavior and his presentation, his anxiety, just coming out in a lot of different ways. Also I included, um, okay, so he is very healthy young boy, actually. He doesn't have any health issues that the mother could think of, no gut issues, no getting sick often. Like he was really, really healthy. And you could look at him and you could see because he's got this beautiful, long, thick hair and he loves superheroes. Like Jason Momoa, Aquaman is like his favorite. That's his idol. Um, so, you know, you think, oh, this kid is healthy, but when they're having these dysregulated behaviors or coming out and saying things uh, negatively about themselves and things like that, we know that there's some imbalance that we need to work, work on. So 
You can go ahead to the next slide, I think, Amitha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so one of the big things was this sibling rivalry between the two of them and the younger brother was actually very sick from a young age. He was going to hospitals a lot. And so he was taking a lot of the energy and time of the parents. And I think there was a lot of resentment building up around that too. Um, and so he was feeling like none of the attention was on him. And then the younger brother, who is also like a client of mine, actually, that's who I was helping first, um, did really beautiful in homeopathy. And he has been very, very healthy for two years, like no hospital visits, anything like that. But it also made me think that maybe some of these aspects of uh, the inherited um, health were coming into this picture too. So this is what we did. Homeopathically, we... Um, we okay to give you a little background on homeopathy homeopathy is the use of ultra dilute substances uh, in nature to elicit a response so it's all about eliciting a healing response in the body and the body takes care of the rest so um it, it's all based on the vital force which is you know our innate intelligence and ability to heal ourselves so there's i can go on and on about that but just to give you a little snippet of what homeopathy is and i love using it because it is by far the most holistic um, approach to medicine that there is because you're looking at every aspect of the person it's not just one thing you're looking at the mind the body the emotions and how they all connect to each other so anyway going back to the case so um, with the constant fighting and things like that. Um, let me see. Uh, okay, so um, video games, like I said, his mom is trying to limit it as much as possible, but she has to go to work. He goes, he, him and his younger brother at his, at his grandmother's house. And then that's just an easy way to keep him busy, this and that. So like parents want to do things a certain way, but then, you know, life happens and you can't always do things the way you want. But a lot of his presentation of um, being very destructive or this negative self-talk on himself and things like that, I gave a remedy called tuberculinum. And because, especially with a lot of the slapping the self, Let's, let's go back. Let's go back real quick before we go here. Okay. Um, so a lot of the slapping the self and hitting the self and all of that um, made me kind of think of this remedy. This is like a kind of common presentation. Um, a lot of these kids actually are born with some type of uh, issue or defect or um, something like that, some abnormality. And this was not the case for him, but it's okay because he was fitting a lot of other things and it like clears out the miasm. So the miasm is just an antiquated homeopathic term for like epigenetics, what we call now, like the inherited gene, um, like inheritance. Um, so, you know, we're learning that things can be activated or inactivated based on environmental triggers. We're learning that um, stressors that our grandparents had could have been passed down to us. Like the science is actually really interesting in this area around intergenerational trauma and um, epigenetics. But anyway, homeopaths like of 200 years ago, which is when this medicine was created, we're already like working on this level. Um, so we gave that remedy and what happened was there was a little bit of movement in the case and this case is actually still in progress but i really wanted to share it with y'all um, because it was just such an interesting um, way to see the healing journey but anyway so there was a little bit of movement in the case she said he calmed down just a little bit he wasn't slapping himself as much but there was still a lot of like negative self-talk and um saying these things about himself and just like Oh, just leave me by the ocean, just leave me there. You don't even care for me and all of this stuff. And I was like, okay, there's, we need to, um, we need to keep working on this. And then the other thing that happened was what did happen of this remedy? Cause we gave three remedies. Um, let me just see my notes and make sure. Um, you probably have it in the next other slides, the next following slide. Not, not, not the next slide, actually, because the next slide is going to be like after the three remedies. So this is just I'm just talking about those three remedies. But anyway, oh. so we gave the remedy a little bit of movement and then. Um, OK, so what happened? Actually, I remember now he started becoming very clingy to her. 
he couldn't be away. He was, he was having a lot of separation anxiety. And, um, and she was saying it was presenting as like, um, she would just go leave the room for one second. He would be screaming. Like if he was sleeping and she would get up and go, he was screaming and crying. And she'd be like, what's wrong? He'd be like, oh, I thought you died. And this was where his mind was going. And like, there was a lot of theme around death coming up which this has actually been a theme coming up a lot for a lot of the kids that I see. And, um, you know, the parents telling me like, oh, my kid is asking about death a lot. I'm, I might've talked about this last time, but anyway, it's been a theme, but this was getting a, a little bit uh, too much because she said that um, she was going to put gas in the car or something like that. And both her kids were sleeping and she went to put the gas, she went inside to pay. And then she comes back and the, both the kids are, crying and screaming and she's like what what happened what's wrong and then the older one um, we're calling him Marco that's not his name he was like mom I, I told him that you died I thought you died and so this was just coming up again and again she couldn't go anywhere without him immediately thinking she died and so that was a very like uh, important indicator for me on how we were like moving through the case so now he's not being so you know, mean to her and violent and this and that. Now he's become too clingy, but this is not what I was going for either. <laughs> like, I don't want that either. Um, so there was some balance we had to find. And so um, I, I, I feel like I should have given a little bit more background information on how I take these cases because I'm working remotely right now. And it's really important to be able to have the person in front of you and observe them. So much of this medicine is an observation and, and just little mannerisms and things like that. You get so much information and through the phone and stuff, I'm getting, um, you know, I'm getting everything through the mother's lens, which is a little bit biased. And so I didn't have that going for me, but sometimes I'll have, um, I'll have parents send me like a little video or a little snippet or something like that, just for me to get like a feel for the child can be really helpful. But um, even without that, we were able to really actually get a really nice picture of the remedy. And the mom, she's been working with me. So she's, she's trained, she knows, like I'm, she knows what questions I'm gonna ask. She knows what I'm looking for and things like that. So um, I just wanted to add that observational skill is very critical and like little details. So I, I might mention things and people are like, I don't even understand why this is important, but it's so important to us as homeopaths. Um, okay, so I was asking more questions about his behavior changes, like when did it start, what was going on at the time and so on. And then I found out that his parents actually separated a year and a half ago or two years ago which is around the time that he started developing the scratching himself, pulling his hair and hitting self thing. And, you know, and this is common um, when kids will start acting out or internalizing things when there's a big transition or change in their life. And separation of parents is definitely a big one. Uh, the birth of the younger sibling was also a stressor for him. And I'll call it a stressor because Anything that puts pressure on the vital force, again, like I said, the innate ability to adapt and be resilient uh, is a stressor. So when you have many different stressors coming at you, uh, or maybe it's even just one for a long period of time, it can eventually shift the vital force out of alignment and you're no longer as adaptable or resilient. And this can present as gut issues, as anxiety, you can develop muscle pain, autoimmune, um, whatever disease, because your, your, your vital force is no longer at ease. So you're developing disease. Um, so the more out of alignment it gets, the more severe it becomes. So my job is to identify and address this. And then, like I said, the body does the rest. Um, and so, okay, we gave that tuberculinum. I didn't mention this, but there was like grinding at night and irritable, destructive, don't want to be touched and looked at. Gave that and then decrease in self-hitting, still some incidents, and then the it, it acted for a little while, and then we kind of knew it was time to give another remedy. So she mentioned that he was starting to have a lot of fears in the house, fears of the dark, he felt he was hearing sounds in the house. Um, she also mentioned he used to have night terrors, which lasted up until age three, where he was just waking up screaming at night. Um, and then the clinginess like we talked about. So 
based on that information, along with some other factors, uh, we gave stramonium was a remedy. And one of my teachers, Paul Hurst, you actually wrote an entire book on this remedy, stramonium. So if you're interested, um, you know, it's, it's just a fascinating medicine because you're matching the presentation to the remedy and this can change. So you're following them in that. And, and a lot of homeopaths practice different. All my mentors, I have mentors all over the world and they all practice homeopathy differently, but there's still some like very um, core tenets to like classical Hanumanian homeopathy, which I um, am more drawn to, but it's about matching the remedy to the person. And we're not treating an illness or disease like this child never received a diagnosis he was not on any medications it was just on his symptoms that we were able to um, formulate this plan so anyway so in kids often there's not so many layers like they're very open this is why i love working with kids they respond so well and so quickly they don't have all these complex layers of trauma and all of this life stuff that's built up um and we call it like an onion, like you're peeling the onion with each remedy, you're getting closer and closer. So with this one, there was a few layers to it. And so it's very clear to a skilled practitioner when a remedy has done its job and it's time to move on to the next layer. So now we've moved on from addressing the inherited aspects to addressing early childhood. So this, the, the night terrors and things like that, we were addressing things in his early development. And then after this remedy, I was keeping touch. I keep a very close eye after, with my um, clients. And I don't know if I actually saw that much movement. I didn't see the shift that I was really looking for. And it had been maybe six to seven weeks since we started working together. And I'm really impatient. And I want to see a more marked shift by, by a certain time. So I told her, let's just reassess the case because I feel like we're missing something. Like we're getting some change here, some change there. And then now he's becoming clingy and this, like, like this is not, we're not getting the whole picture somehow. So let's, um, let's reassess the case. And so as she was sharing with me, I received like an intuitive hit, like, oh, and then, um, you know, she was telling me, oh, we have a dentist appointment coming up and he's just terrified of the dentist. He develops cavities really easily, which is a huge keynote of this remedy. And I mean, I can't believe I didn't ask about dental history before because I always get so much information when I ask about dental history. There's so much there. Um, she also noted there was some early like masturbation or things like that, which can be very normal. But it, again, it's giving me a lot of information, especially for this remedy picture. Um, the waking up terrified and screaming if mom is gone at night. And it's a very indignant remedy, the one that I gave. It's like very sensitive to injustices. So whenever his mom would be giving his younger brother attention or something like that, he felt that was an injustice to him. Um, and so the remedy I gave was Staphysagria. And this remedy had beautiful resonance. This really is the one where you could see the shift. So like I said, we're still in the middle of the case, but I wanted to share it because you can follow the unwinding process of healing. And it was really beautiful to see. And I, I, like I said, those other remedies were important to get to this point. They clear, each one kind of clears the case. A well-selected remedy will clear out like the noise and the junk and then make it very clear which remedy is actually gonna have the most resonance for the child um, or the person. I mean, this is for all ages. Um, okay, so, and like, I want to really also emphasize this, the healing journey is a journey and it is not linear. It is... Oh gosh, my computer's doing something. Um, it's not linear. So you can get better for a while and then there can be some backpedaling. There can be some slowing down. There can be some other things that come up that you didn't even realize were still there that you were still dealing with or that you know um, were an issue. So it's going back and like processing everything holistically. So, um, but the more you see it and the more you work with homeopathy, um, it becomes more predictable. So I like to do a bit of education around this for parents and tell them what to look out for um, and help them not freak out when things happen. So for him, she noticed that he was bringing up things from the past. And now we're now, like I said, we're discovering how trauma affects the body and health. But we could really see in this case that things that him and his mom might have not even remembered were coming up from him. So like there was a case or there was an incident where his mother had to, she had to go on a work project. They're in a different country. So she had to come to the US for six weeks and do um, something for work. 
and he brought that up and this happened a year ago and he was like mom when you had to leave like I was really sad and um and she was like she wasn't even thinking about that and so that was really interesting how that came up and then he was also talking about the loss of his pet dog and she um and his name was Leon and so he had he had passed maybe a year ago as well and so she so you could see and he was bringing up all these things he brought up his father's car accident and how he was so scared and worried for his father all of these things happened a year or two years ago and they were all coming up after this remedy so i was like you know you're kind of seeing these events actually impacted him much more than we even realize and they could be a reason why his behavior was becoming the way it was becoming um, and so she also noticed that even though there's still some moments where he'll say like, oh, I'm being this way, punish me, but he's overall much more self-assured. He's calmer and he's kinder and he's curious and he's um, able to focus more. He's able to concentrate on things and he's, um, he, he, she just feels like he's actually being himself again, which is what I like to hear when I'm working with people and with homeopathy. I want to hear that people are feeling more like themselves. That's, that's the key. And so, um, so I chose this case for two reasons. One, it has the aspects of anxiety and ADD, like we talked about, maybe even some oppositional defiance, uh, potentially. And then he had never received a diagnosis or taken medications or anything like that. And so it's not it's not the diagnosis that we need, it's the child in front of us. It's very important to get very clear on that. Um, and the second reason was, it's just a, a beautiful illustration of what the healing journey can look like and that these children can heal, not just be managed, but heal. And I've been doing this for years now and I'm just in awe of how these like little homeopathic nanoparticles have the ability to elicit such an unfolding and such a response in someone and how magnificently the human body and the um, mind is designed and uh, how the mind, body and spirit are connected and how they impact each other. And I've really learned so much about healing through this medicine. Like we learn, you know, in school, we learn about pathology, we learn about illness, we learn about, you know, how disease works and the physiology and we're on medscape and up to date and all those things and i love that and i love learning about that but through this medicine honestly i feel like i get to see healing like i get to learn what healthy people look like what does that actually look like that's why i feel like i have such high standards when i work with people because i'm like uh like managing things and just like this is not health this is why i'm not a huge supplement person because it just becomes kind of like any other medication like might as well just take medication because you're just taking something you're dependent and you're, you're managing it i think we need a really multimodal approach this is why in naturopathic medicine we use nutrition we use herbs we can use we correct deficiencies and imbalances but um we really have to look at that whole picture and um so, Doctor uh, Doctor Sonam, mm -hmm. let, let's just uh, um, um, I just want to put a structure into into this. So, so when you gave the uh, medication, the homeopathic medication, um, then uh, just to, let's just talk about uh, the test. I see this testimonial right here, right? Yeah. So she's texting me. She was telling me, so y'all can hear from her yourself that she's saying the part. He had a birthday party recently. He just turned six, and she said the party went well. He loved everything, but. One thing she noticed was that several times throughout the night, he came to her unprompted and thanked her for the party. He was saying he loved the party. Thank you for the bounce house, for this, and naming all these specific things that he was so thankful for. And she said he's almost never thankful. So it was very sweet. And, and how much time did you take uh, for this from the time when you started um, the diagnosis and the treatment? How much time did it take for the, for the child to settle down Okay, so just to be clear, I do not diagnose or treat. Um, I am just simply uh, taking, making uh, evaluations and making recommendations. Yeah, and sure. I have to say that because I'm not in Oregon where we can diagnose and treat. So I am currently in North Carolina. So I have to be very clear about that. Um, but it, it doesn't, it, it's like, again, like I said, it's not the diagnosis, it's, it's the child. So the whole case from beginning to end and all those three remedies, it's been three months. So, and it has 
And so you still are in the process of evaluation with, with this mm -hmm. child? We're still watching because I want to see that this holds. So sometimes, like I said, with the healing journey, it might get better for a while and then it's everything's looking good, but then there's something else that comes up. So I really want to see like it should be gentle, it should be um, deep, and it should be long lasting, the effects of the remedy. Sure, of the sure. remedy. So, so it's, he's been in, with, uh, under your care for the last three months and you've seen right. significant improvement uh, using yeah. only homeopathy or any other naturopathic medicine also? So we are, we talked about diet. So there's always that dietary counseling, nutrition counseling, what is he eating? Food dyes are a big thing that we talk about and um, sugar intake, processed food, stuff like that. His diet was okay. His GI system was okay. Like a lot of kids, they like to eat bland foods. They call it like the white diet bread and pasta and things like that. Um, so we, we talked about that, but the another really big thing in this case was a lot of um, like parental techniques and like helping the parent um, be more uh, observant and in touch with the child and like see that this child has certain unmet needs that are creating this type of behavior. Um, and that's what I see a lot. Like they're having, and, and like, even with adults, we have like unmet needs when they're not met, we start acting in different ways. So we talked about like, for example, um, a lot of these children need a lot. They, they're used to criticism. They're always like, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. And it's like, they're always being criticized and they take it to heart. They're very sensitive. This one at least is very sensitive, takes everything personally, takes everything to heart. So we talked about a lot of positive feedback. I said, you know, when you want to give a criticism, we're gonna sandwich it in between two sincerely positive comments. Like, you know, identify their strengths, identify the things they're good at, what you like and sandwich it in between that. So it's like a little bit of a cushion. So they're not taking it to heart all the time. So we did a lot of that. There was a lot of like positive psychology, uh, parenting techniques just to help him um, feel a little bit more connected to his mother because like now she's a single mom and he's taking on all yeah. this anger on her. And you, they need to have that relationship. They need to have that bond to, um, to be able to trust each other and, and move forward. So that was really important. Um, and then I, like I said, I, in the second text here, she was talking about, um, he was thanking her for the party, helping with chores. And then twice he mentioned his father's car accident. And then he was me mentioning missing the dog, Leon, uh, and that he just wants Leon back. And so, there's a lot of emotional trauma, emotional yeah, trauma. Exactly, perceived trauma, totally. And we can think like yeah. trauma means something very severe. Trauma looks this way, but it can be, anything could be a trauma for them. We don't even realize um, that very mild, subtle things can, can really affect them and become internalized and like crystallized in their mind. And then it can start to hinder and obstruct their vital force. So we need to work with that and help them process these things a little bit better. Sure, sure. Any questions uh, from anyone? Um, should we move on? Okay, so we have a down, uh, we can, you can send us the uh, PDF. Sure, let and, me put it in the chat. Yeah, and then uh, unfortunately, we have to wrap up this session soon because we have another session right after this. Um, so I, I want to get to the questions. Any other thing you want to... Uh, and um, before I get to the questions, I have a question coming up from someone. Sure, sure, go ahead. Okay. Okay, oh, that's you only. Uh, yeah, oh. you can send it to me. Uh -huh. You can send it to oh, me yeah, and I, 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 can, okay, I, cool. I, I can I can, uh, do that. Um, any other question from the audience? Um, all right, yes, there is a question. So you do therapy and treatment both. That's the question. So that sounds like you were doing uh, emotional therapy to, to this um, child at, at the same time you were um, giving the medication. Right. So I, I, I don't um, like uh, advertise or anything that I'm doing therapy or I'm not a child psychologist, anything like that. I highly recommend working with one. Um, but in my like uh, research and reading, and I'm very like, in this world, I really love working with children and, and learning about these techniques. Um, I offer whatever I do know. So I just share everything that I have come by. 
but for certain kids, they might need to work with a, a, a professional to, and, and the parent often needs some like retraining and some tips, but just being a homeopath and like a naturopath, we, we learn so much about how things affect each other. So it comes very naturally in a lot of ways to say, oh, like maybe you didn't realize that this was affecting this, but for me, I'm thinking, okay, this might've might, might have caused such and such and such. So we kind of um, look objectively and put the, put the pieces together for you a little bit or make you, or, or bring things up that um, you might not have connected in the past or made associations. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. Uh, any more questions before we wrap up? Okay. There is another follow-up question. Uh, how long would an appointment with you be at an average? How, how long are your appointments? That's what I'm understanding the question. So for an initial appointment, generally an hour and a half to two hours to get a full case. Sometimes it doesn't take that long. And for kids, usually they, like I said, they're so open and and sometimes it's just very clear what they need um so but i I usually say keep an hour and a half keep two hours aside just in case we need the full time but an hour half is usually the first initial appointment and then follow up i like to closely follow up and then maybe it'll be like 40 45 minutes to follow up and see and sometimes if it's really quick you know through email or text or something like that um but in the beginning we follow very closely and once we see the child or the person is on the direction that we want them to go, then we don't, you know, you, it comes becomes very infrequent after that. I say, come and see me, you know, in the spring or something, and we'll just do tune-ups or something just to see how you're doing. Okay. All right. Um, well, any more questions before we wrap up? Okay. Uh, I think, I think um, that's... Uh, fine um and then uh, i think we with that we just wrap up this session um any final comment from you uh, dr sonan before i wrap up um well i hope that i was able to convey that um that there is so much more to healing than um than giving a magical pill or something like yeah. that like it's a process it really is a process and and i feel like the people that are here and watching this i know that you are already such good parents because you're here you want to help your kid and you're doing you know everything i know like a lot of people are like even the parents take the blame on themselves but it's it's really uh our kids are just so unique they come out they're already their own thing and um, you know, we get a lot of pressure from our parents or how they should be or this or that, but it really is about identifying their needs. So I really want to help parents um, identify their own needs. Sometimes I have to treat the parent first. <laughs> Sometimes it's like a lot of stuff going on with the parent that the kids just picking up on and reflecting back to them. And then other times it's like, we really just have to understand and, uh, and everybody wants to be understood and seen and acknowledged and you know we our little ones are just the same and sometimes kids that need the most love ask for it in the most unlovable ways and so that can be so stressful but we just need to learn how to how how they can receive our love that we're trying to give them all right with that thought uh, thank you so much for joining us and we have actually, um, right after your session, we have a session on autism and diet. So, Ooh, so you, gotta might, that out. <laughs> yeah, you might want to tune into that. So that's why I have to um, uh, end this session now. And thank you so much for joining us. And of thank course. you for people, the viewers. Um, and uh, with that thought, um, have a great weekend. Bye-bye.